Now that we have gotten our hands on playing the Xenomorph in the PTB, a lot of people have made the claim that Demogorgon has become a victim of severe power creep, basically making the claim that the Xenomorph is essentially the same as Demogorgon, but better in every way. I think the DBD devs were afraid of this too because they added some barely noticeable buffs and nerfs to Demogorgon in the upcoming update. So what I want to do in this video is quickly look at both killers, see what their similarities actually are, their differences, and answer the question of whether or not Demogorgon has been rendered obsolete by the release of the Xenomorph. To start, let's look at their similarities. The most obvious similarity they have is their ability to teleport by traversing under the map. For Xeno, these locations are already pre-existing in good spots, they recharge runner mode much faster while traversing them, there are 7 locations on the map near generators to teleport to, while traversing under the map it allows for the Xeno to see the footsteps of nearby survivors, and activates killer instinct on survivors within 12 meters when exiting a tunnel. Now let's look at Demogorgon's teleport. Demo has 6 portals that he must manually place, so one less than Xeno. He must also activate them in order to get full use out of them. So Demo does get the benefit of being able to have control over where his portals are, but they take a lot of time to actually set up. He has to not only traverse the map by foot to set them up, but he also has to use them to activate them. In addition, Demo's time to teleport from portal to portal is faster than Xeno at 1.5 seconds, but Xeno does have the added benefit of possibly detecting walking survivors while traversing, allowing for beneficial detours. That's because Xeno must manually traverse their tunnel system, whereas Demo automatically traverses the upside down while teleporting, although it does feel sluggish to do in my opinion. Moving on, Demo's portals can be destroyed by survivors. That can buy Demo a little bit of extra time and match which is nice but overall severely hurts his map control when they're destroyed. Yet Demo does have the ability to use his portals to camp hooks, most notably the basement because he has a lot of time to teleport there before survivors can escape. Similarly, Demo's portals can be used to protect specific things like Devour Hope or other hex totems because his portals activate Killer Instinct up to 4 meters by default once they're activated. The portals also give a short 3 second undetectable effect to Demo when he uses them, however a map wide sound effect is played anytime Demo starts to teleport. He's incredibly slow coming out of his portals allowing survivors to get critical distance, unlike Xeno who bursts out instantly, has no audio cue for survivors when traversing tunnels, entering or exiting. The only way for survivors to know if the Xenomorph is coming is whether or not they have a turret close enough nearby to hear the motion sensor. Lastly, to top it all off, even while undetectable, Demo has offensively loud footsteps. When it comes to both the fun to use factor and the balance factor, I would say that the Xenomorph is going to come out on top in both categories for this comparison. Xeno's teleport is way more user friendly, it's always available to use even if you have to quickly find a tunnel entrance, it has a way lower skill cap to get value out of it, it has more utility than Demo's portals by default, it's overall just cooler to use, and survivors can't take it away from you, so it's fair to say that Demogorgon's teleport has been power crept. Now let's move on to the next topic, which is their M2 power. In this case, it's the Xenomorph's runner mode, or more specifically the tail attack, versus the Demogorgon's shred attack. Now, now, although there are some similarities between how a survivor plays against these attacks, I personally think they're too different to compare directly. The Xenomorph's tail attack is way closer to Nemesis's whip or even a Hunter's hatchet than it is a shred. The only thing that can really be compared between them is if one is more fun to use than the other and which attack is stronger, but those don't have much to do with power creep in this context. It does seem like people are reaching for straws to compare them on this one. However, there is a completely valid comparison I want to address. For years, Demogorgon has been the undisputed champion of Save the Best for Last, or Stabiffle. It's kind of the only thing that has kept the killer relevant at all, at least at high MMR. Without Stabiffle, Demo would be significantly weaker. Tread is just a very reliable attack to use to hit the obsession and save stacks. So now we have Xenomorph entering the picture with not only an incredibly reliable and stronger M2, 
but also the ability to get M1 hits easier than Demo, thus farming Stabiffle stacks much faster. Demogorgon, on the other hand, always has access to Shred. Survivors can't take it away and there's no cooldown, yet the cost for missing Shred is severely punishing. Not only does Demo get stunned if he hits an object, he also gets fatigued and is further out of position because of the lunge. On the flip side, Xeno's attack is much more lethal, has no indication it's about to be used other than runner mode being activated, and a relatively small fatigue for missing an attack. Flame turrets can knock Xeno out of runner mode, which does surely take away the ability to use the tail attack. That said, Xeno's biggest weakness is having runner mode deactivated by a turret. However, by using save the best for last, Xeno is encouraged to ignore the turrets and go for M1 hits, building Stabiffle stacks in the process. I'm actually going to make a prediction right now that Stabiffle will be so strong on Xeno, the behavior is going to nerf the perk either at release or shortly after, which will only make a demo an even lesser kill than he is now. In short, even though the M2 attacks are different from each other, because of Save the Best for Last, I think the vast majority of players will prefer to use the Xenomorph. When it comes to their add-ons, I think both killers have decent options aside from their meta picks to choose from. No killer has perfect add-ons, but at least in this case, it's not a I must use these two specific add-ons because all the other ones are worthless situation. And lastly, we have their Moris. And yes, I'm comparing them because Xeno's Mori has some pretty awesome gore in it. Demo's Mori although a cool idea where he basically bites off a survivor's entire head now is really just seen for the head sucking that it actually is. The Mori needs a little TLC even if it's just the removed face gore from Singularity's Mori. So yes, Demo's Mori has been power crept as well. Now I already know there's a chance Demogorgon mains will probably hate this video because they know every fine detail and trick of how to maximize value out of Demo. However, I like to base my videos and opinions on the reality of what most players experience while playing playing the game. Running into a god tier demo player is so rare that it's basically a unicorn or even a twins main. And at the end of the day, all I'm really advocating for here is some kind of Demogorgon buff or TLC that makes the character just a little bit more interesting in modern DBD. So there you have it. Is this the end of the Demogorgon never to be seen again outside of daily challenges? Do you think this comparison is stupid or do you think the Xenomorph makes another killer obsolete altogether? Let me know and as always, Thanks for watching and have a good one.